Good evening. Welcome to London and to the 1999 IEEE Honors Ceremony. It's my privilege to serve as the Institute's 1999 President and to be your host for this evening's events. Those trumpeters are from the Corps of the Royal Engineers and our Toastmaster is Mr. Kenneth Tappenden. I would like to begin by asking you to please rise for a toast. It's a tradition in the United Kingdom when people join at a gathering like this honor ceremony, the Queen is remembered and honored, and that is known as the Loyal Toast. I invite you to participate in this tradition, especially today when Queen Elizabeth is celebrating her birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, to Her Majesty the Queen. Queen. If you would remain standing, I would ask you to please join me and toasting the members of our profession whom we honor tonight, the recipients of the 1999 IEEE Medals and Awards. Recipients. We have a wonderful program planned for you after dinner. Until then, please enjoy your meal and each other's good company.
Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the IEEE, Kenneth Laker. I hope you all enjoyed your meal. Sharing the podium with me is Bruce Eisenstein, our president-elect. Thank you, Cam. We have a full program this evening, so I'll simply add my welcome and tell you that I'm delighted to be with you for this very important event. Assisting in our presentations is the secretary of the IEEE, Maurice Papo. We're especially pleased to hold this year's honor ceremony in London and in this magnificent and historic room. Just this afternoon, Queen Elizabeth was here as part of the birthday, her birthday celebration. The banqueting house is part of Whitehall Palace, originally built for plays and state occasions. It became the principal residence of England's rulers during the 17th century. What a great venue to celebrate the achievements of our, our honors recipients. Here, under this gorgeous ceiling painted by Sir Peter Paul Rubens, this hall and the great city of London are indeed a fitting occasion for the first IEEE honors ceremony ever held outside North America. London is in the IEEE United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland section the largest section in our Region 8. I'd like to recognize second ch Section Chair Roland Sam and Region 8 Director Rolf Remshart. Gentlemen, please stand. <laughs> we also have with us several past Region 8 Directors. Maurice Papo, Charles Turner, Charles Turner, Basil Osborne, and Kurt Richter. And we're delighted you could join us this evening. I'd also like to welcome representatives from our two newest award sponsors. From Alcatel, sponsor of the IEEE Award in International Communication, is Dr. Peter Radley, president of Alcatel UK. And Dr. Hans-Peter Quatt is here from the Deutsche Telekom, sponsor of the 1999 IEEE Heinrich Hertz Medal, which we are presenting this evening. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's truly a pleasure to welcome you to this special IEEE event. London is the home of the Institution of Electrical Engineers, one of our most vital sister societies. And tonight, before we begin our formal program, we want to pay tribute to an esteemed colleague who has made exceptional contributions to the IEEE and to our profession. John Williams is a wonderful friend who for a decade has been instrumental in welcoming and promoting collaborative activities between our two organizations. This week, he is retiring as Secretary and Chief Executive of the IEEE. John, I'm delighted to have this very special occasion at which to salute you in front of this assembly, which includes much of the IEEE leadership, many of your IEEE colleagues, and distinguished guests from our technical professional world. We thank you for your tireless efforts to foster our cooperative relationship for the betterment of engineers and humanity worldwide. And we wish you a long and enjoyable retirement. Our membership is at an all-time high. 1998 saw the largest annual membership increase in our history, and that trend is continuing this year. Electronic delivery of information is, re is redefining the IEEE and our publishing operations. For example, new technologies are making it easier to cross-link and search all IEEE information and cost-effectively generate print and electronic publications from a common database. 
and we're creating more electronic products and services. IEEE standards are now provided online, and our IEEE, IEEE electronic library is available via the internet. One constant among this change is our dedication to celebrating outstanding individual technological and professional achievements and contributions. The IEEE and its predecessor societies, the American Institute of Electrical Engineers and the Institute of Radio Engineers, have done this for almost a century. For the last few years, we have also recognized organizations that have advanced technology and the engineering profession. In September, we will hold a ceremony in New York to honor the 1999 recipients of the IEEE Corporate Recognitions. At that event, we will award IEEE Corporate Innovation Recognitions to BBN Technologies, which is now part of GTE, and Nokia Corporation. We will also honor Bernard Meyerson, the recipient of the, ninth, of the IEEE Ernst Weber Engineering Leadership Recognition. He is an IBM Fellow and Director of the Telecom Technologies Department at IBM's Thomas J. Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights, New York. The IEEE Corporate Recognition Program and today's honor ceremony provide the award recipients with peer recognition for contributions to our profession. This recognition helps to increase public awareness of the accomplishments of engineers and promotes excellence throughout the global engineering community. Our long tradition of recognizing engineering excellence continues this evening. The theme we have adopted for this occasion is a lineage of leadership. These words echo England's sovereign lineage, whose royal members graced this hall with their presence throughout the centuries. Our theme also captures the essence of the Institute's vision of a world made better by leadership in electro and information technologies. This vision is exemplified by the accomplishments of the leading engineers and scientists we honor tonight. These individuals have made contributions of historic proportion that benefit society and our profession. Before we present the IEEE medals and awards, we will present two special awards. The first is the John Fritz Medal. It is awarded by the IEEE and the other four founder societies of the United Engineering Trustees that now comprise the United Engineering Foundation. This medal was established in 1902 in honor of John Fritz, a pioneer in America's iron and steel industries. Its purpose is to make his name and life a power for good throughout through the years in the fields of applied science in which he had made himself so eminent. The 1999 recipient of the John Fritz Medal is George H. Heilmeyer, Chairman Emeritus of Telcordia Technologies, formerly Belcor. He receives the medal for the discovery of electro-optic effect in liquid crystals leading to the generation of new market and new industry. What makes George Heilmeyer so eminently worthy of this medal is the pattern of excellence he has demonstrated throughout his career. His ideas of how to use liquid crystals for instrumentation displays were only the beginning. He also developed many of the techniques and principles that move them toward practical use by billions of people. Every day we see the results of this discovery in calculators, watches, computers, and other instrumentation. He holds the 1997 IEEE Medal of Honor, our highest recognition, as well as highest honor that the United States bestows for scientific excellence, the National Medal of Science. I am pleased to present the John Fritz Medal to Dr. George Heilmeyer. I'm in, I am deeply honored by this award, especially when I look at the previous recipients. And I'm particularly pleased that this award could be made here tonight, Ken, because I've been a member of related professional societies all of my life. As a matter of fact, as a student, I was an AIEE member. 
Dr. Concordia will, will smile at that. I was introduced to the AIEE uh, by one of my professors at the University of Pennsylvania who told me that nothing could replace the romance of 60 cycles. And so consequently, I became an AIEE manner. However, I must say that as a 20-year-old student, I didn't necessarily think that 60 cycles was the kind of romance that I had in mind. I left the field of liquid crystals uh, in the early 70s, did my work in the 60s. And I had a very, very humbling experience on my way into uh, the city of London from the airport the other day. The car had a, uh, a display terminal, and the display was a liquid crystal display. And ladies and gentlemen, I haven't seen such a poor liquid crystal display since I did my work back in the 60s. <laughs> and I couldn't help but wonder if the committee that selected this year's Fritz Medal winner would have seen that display, that maybe I wouldn't have been standing here at all. Thank you all very much. The second special award we are presenting tonight is the Elmer A. Sperry Award. It is awarded by six engineering societies, the IEEE and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the Society of Automotive Engineers, the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and the American Society of Civil Engineers. I'd like to thank Gordon McKinsey, 1999 Chair of the Elmer A. Sperry Board of Award, and Victor Woke, Sperry Board of Award member, for joining us here this evening. The Elmer A. Sperry Award is given in recognition of a distinguished engineering contribution, which, through application proved in actual service, has advanced the art of transportation, whether by land, sea, or air. The medal was first presented in 1955 commemorate the achievements of Dr. Elmer A. Sperry, a pioneer of technical innovation and transportation. We are pleased to present the 1999 award to Bradford W. Parkinson, the Edward C. Wells Professor of Aeronautics and Astronautics at Stanford University. He is receiving this honor for leading the concept development and early implementation of the Global Positioning System, a breakthrough technology for the precise navigation position determination of transportation vehicles. It's unlikely that any engineering achievement has advanced the field of transportation as much as GPS. The applications of this brilliant satellite technology extend to nearly every object that moves on or above the Earth's surface. In the U.S. Air Force, Brad headed the effort to define and develop a global positioning system and perform the first field tests for the U.S. Department of Defense. His leadership delivered the essence of the GPS. He built consensus from a diverse group of scientists in the U.S. military, industry, and academia to make it happen. Today, GPS provides navigation for airlines, trucking networks, railroads, shipping lines, military units, warships, and even motorists on the roads of the world today. I'm pleased to present the Elmer A. Sperry Award to Dr. Bradford W. Parkinson. dad uh, was born in Lincolnshire, incidentally. Uh, it's a great honor for me, particularly because the award is named for El Elmer Sperry, who pioneered practical gyroscopes, among other things. And I have been involved in gyroscopes for about 40 years myself. Invention and new ideas are part of a continuum that really have three phases. There's a technology phase, an inspiration and execution phase, and then there's an application phase. And the technology prologue is fully as important as the invention itself. And so although the inventive episode began in 1973 when I headed the defining effort to 
determine what GPS would be. I have to acknowledge the technology that went before us. I don't know if everyone is aware, but we have clocks on GPS satellites which are stable to one second in 300,000 years. We did not develop that technology. We merely used it. Also, the current effort in applying GPS to me is absolutely astounding, and I have to give great credit to those people. But I especially want to thank my original development team because their energy, their enthusiasm, their tenacity, their sacrifice made GPS possible. Air Force officers, mostly with MS and PhDs, certainly the Aerospace Corporation and many contractors, some of, some of whom are here today, as a matter of fact, were very much a part of our unified team. So wherever you are, team, you did great. This honor is yours. Uh, I would also like to thank my family, especially my wife Jenny, who continues to put up with my type A personality. And finally, I especially appreciate the uh, selection committee, the Sperry Awards Committee, Gordon McKenzie and Victor Woker here. Thanks, Gordon. Your short written history is superb, so life is good. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Parkinson. Each year, the Institute's Board of Directors elects a limited number of senior members to the grade of IEEE Fellow in recognition of their professional distinction. IEEE Fellows are an elite assembly. The number of fellows elected in any one year may not exceed one-tenth of one percent of the voting membership. In 1999, 239 members were elevated to IEEE Fellow. Several of them are with us this evening. The new fellows and their citations are listed alphabetically beginning on page 34 of your program. As I read the names of the new fellows who are here tonight, I ask that they rise and remain standing until all the names are called. Please hold your applause until all the new fellows have been introduced. William K. Burns. Guy Dumont. Ferial El Hawari, Marvin E. Fraking, Lawrence S. Goldberg, Sumeshwar C. Gupta, David G. Haig, Theodore W. Hissey, Jr., Elia Capone, J. Carl Sue, Wolfgang Mathis, Kataporam Moiden Mohidan, Oscar Moreno, Balarama V. Murti, Turu Nakamura, Minoru Obara, Roberto Padovani, Donald E. Pearson, Christopher P. Silva, Niha Sinadari, Roger Bowles, and Charles Wheatley. Please join me in saluting these leaders of our profession. Also in our audience are fellows who were elected in previous years. I, I'd like to ask that they also please stand. Now I'm pleased to introduce Richard Nichols, Chair of the IEEE Awards Board. Thank you, Ken, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Institute administers eight categories of awards bestowed by its Board of Directors. These include the IEEE Medal of Honor, IEEE Medals, Technical Field Awards, Honorary Memberships, Corporate Recognitions, Service Awards, 
prize papers, and scholarships. The awards typically consist of a gold and or bronze medals, certificates, and honoraria. Some awards are funded by the IEEE Foundation, others by industry, and some by IEEE entities. Members of the Institute and its societies can nominate candidates for any Institute award. Recipients are determined through a rigorous selection process that begins with an evaluation of nominations by the selection committee for the specific award. This committee then submits its recommendations to the awards board for approval with final approval from the IEEE Board of Directors. The awards to be presented this evening are described in your program. On behalf of the awards board and its committees, I would like to thank everyone who participated in the selection process and tell you how proud we are to acknowledge the achievements of this year's recipients. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. We'll begin with the presentation of the IEEE Service Awards. The IEEE Richard M. Emerson Award was established in 1986 to recognize distinguished service to the technical objectives of the IEEE. The award is named in honor of Dr. Richard M. Emerson, a highly revered former executive director and general manager of the Institute. It is sponsored by the IEEE Technical Activities Board. The recipient of the IEEE Richard M. Emerson Award is Edward Alton Parrish, president of the Worcester Polytech Institute in Massachusetts. He is receiving the award for eminent leadership in the technical and educational activities of the Institute, particularly for his visionary work in accreditation and for his long-term dedication to the technical and publication activities of the IEEE Computer Society. Ed Parrish is well recognized for his work in pattern recognition and machine intelligence and has dedicated nearly three decades to advancing electrotechnology through the activities of the IEEE Computer Society. He directed his efforts at improving the Society's technical programs and services with special emphasis on education. His contributions produce a significant and lasting impact on the Society's governing board. As Computer Society president, he built an effective leadership team and left behind a legacy of cooperation between volunteers and staff that continues today. As vice president of IEEE educational activities, he helped build a strong financial foundation that enabled his successors to initiate new programs and effect major lasting changes. Ed is a long-standing champion of accreditation. He has spent nearly 20 years as an engineering program evaluator. His participation and leadership in the U.S. Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology has enabled prudent reform of the criteria for engineering education. This reform produced the milestone document, Engineering Criteria 2000, and the current processes for accrediting U.S. engineering programs. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Edward Alton Parrish truly exemplifies the energy, spirit, and dedication of Dick Emerson. It is an honor to present him with his award. Thank you very much, Ken. I think most of us become involved in the IEEE for three main reasons. First, of course, is the opportunity to try and keep abreast of advancements in our technical fields and to have a forum for presenting results from our research or other contributions to fuel those advances. Secondly, I would cite the opportunity to develop extensive personal networks of truly outstanding colleagues and personal friends. Third is the opportunity for service, the opportunity to give back to the profession from which we've taken so much. I've certainly benefited enormously 
on the first two counts and hope that in some small way I've begun to repay my own personal debt to the profession through my IEEE activities. Finally, I'd like to thank Shirley, my wife of almost 36 years, for her patience and understanding during those long weeks of IEEE meetings. Without her support and, how shall I say this, uh, the enabling, being the enabling technology, I wouldn't have been able to participate in the IEEE and for certain wouldn't be here tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ed. The IEEE Harridan Pratt Award was established in 1971 by the IEEE Foundation. Harridan Pratt served the Institute as president, and he dedicated 23 years to the IEEE as a member of the Board of Directors. This award recognizes outstanding service to the Institute and is presented annually to an individual who renders years of dedicated and exemplary service to the IEEE. It is sponsored by the IEEE Foundation. The recipient is Dr. Vijay K. Bhargava, professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. Dr. Bhargava has worked avidly to promote the IEEE and the electrical engineering profession, both internationally and in his local sections and region. He helped establish the Canadian Conference in Electrical and Computer Engineering which today is Canada's dominant conference in its field. And he has been a critical force in bringing other IEEE technical meetings to his region. As Region 7 Director, he fostered cooperation between the IEEE and the Canadian Society for Electrical and Computer Engineering and helped lay the groundwork for the creation of IEEE Canada. BJ is known for his ability to motivate individuals to think creatively. With this perspective as Vice President of Regional Activities, he promoted the formation of the Graduates of the Last Decade, or GOLD program, to encourage membership retention among recent graduates and spurred a number of other membership initiatives. He also has helped build bridges between the IEEE and national societies, particularly in Japan and India. Today we enjoy truly cooperative relationships with many of these important sister societies. BJ, you are receiving the Harridan Pratt Award for meritorious service to the Institute, particularly in region, regional and section activities and for your efforts to improve relationships with technical and professional organizations worldwide. Please come forward and receive your medal. I would uh, first like to thank the members of the Harrodin Proud Award Committee, as well as my friends and well-wishers who thought that I'm deserving of this award. And to receive this medal from President Laker in such an historic venue is an auspicious bonus. During the course of my career, I have tried to be an active volunteer for our profession. Electrical engineers provide the tools to bring the world close together. I felt that it was equally important to try to bring members of our profession elsewhere in more contact. This has given me the wonderful and unique opportunity to work with fellow engineers in over 30 countries. It has allowed me to develop not only academically but also culturally, as I have observed and learned from many. I would like to thank past presidents Troy Nagel and Tom Keynes for organizing the roundtable discussions with our sister societies in Japan and India, and for allowing me to be a part of the IEEE at the 50th anniversary celebration of the Popov Society in Russia. I would like to thank the Communication Society for funding a lecture tour to six countries in South America and a visit to Vietnam, both of which I have fond personal and professional memories. At each of these visits, it was a pleasure to interact with the local volunteers and students. 
I would like to thank NTT Wireless Laboratories for arranging my lecture tour of universities in Japan. Much of IEEE business, including the interaction with the students, was transacted during this visit. During my career as an IEEE volunteer, I have done my best to try and further the interest of IEEE and, our, and of our profession all over the world. In this, I'm certainly not alone, and I share this award with the many others who have a similar vision. And finally, I would like to thank my family, perhaps in the language of my wife. Merci beaucoup, Yolande, Maud et Alexandre, de me supporter dans tous mes efforts. Je vous aime beaucoup et je partage cette médaille avec vous. Thank you very much. Thank you, VJ. The IEEE Jack S. Kilby Signal Processing Medal, sponsored by Texas Instruments, was established in 1996 to recognize exceptional contributions to signal processing. It was awarded for the first time in 1997. This year's recipient, this year's recipient is Lawrence R. Rabiner, Vice President of Research at AT&T Labs in Florham Park, New Jersey. He is being recognized for his far-reaching impact on the fields of digital signal processing and automatic speech recognition through leadership, research, and education. For almost 30 years, Larry Rabiner, Rabiner has pioneered digital signal processing, laying much of its fundamental groundwork. He has authored some of the most important papers and books in the field. Today, signal processing is at the heart of multimedia communications, especially telecommunications, where the processing of speech audio, image, and video signals is carried out using the techniques he created. His contributions to speech recognition have had a profound effect on every practical speaker-independent voice product on the market, and they resulted in the large-scale deployment of intelligent voice recognition in the AT&T network. His work helped raise signal processing to prominence worldwide. He was instrumental in promoting the growth of the IEEE Signal Processing Society almost from its inception. It is now our fourth largest society. It's an honor and pleasure to invite Dr. Lawrence Rabiner to accept the IEEE Jack S. Kilby Signal Processing Medal. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank the IEEE for bestowing the Kilby Medal on me, and I would like to thank the Texas Instrument Corporation for recognizing the importance of digital signal processing as an entity onto its own and well-deserving of such a medal. I consider my own technical career to be a very lucky one. I've been lucky in many ways. First of all, I've been fortunate enough to work all my technical career in two institutions, namely MIT as a student, undergraduate and graduate, and AT&T Bell Labs, and most recently AT&T Labs Research. These have both been places which fundamentally recognize the importance of a sound scientific basis for all engineering contributions. And they've encouraged me in every way to go out and take risks, to explore new fields, and that has led to virtually everything I've been able to do. I've also been fortunate in having the opportunity to work with many of the giants of the field of digital signal processing, and I'd like to single out just two of them because they've been so important in my career. When I first started at MIT, just by happenstance, I attended a lecture by Ben Gold, where he virtually introduced the field of digital signal processing in that lecture and inspired me to think about that as a possible opportunity for my career. A year later, when I did my doctoral thesis, I had the absolute unbelievable experience of sharing an office with Ben Gold, and he became a mentor and a colleague of mine, and throughout our technical careers, he's always been a friend and a colleague for me. Ben was the first recipient of the Kilby Award in 1997, two years ago. The second person who's had a major influence in my career is Jim Flanagan. Jim served 
as my master's thesis supervisor at Bell Labs. He served as a co-advisor for my PhD thesis, and he was my boss, my colleague, and my mentor from the time I joined Bell Laboratories after my PhD in 1967 until 1990. He served as a model and an inspiration for how to do excellent scientific and engineering work, and for this I will be eternally grateful, Jim. Finally, I'd like to mention one other colleague who's here tonight, Rich Cox, who in his own right has been a major contrib contributor to the field of digital signal processing in general and speech processing in particular. I'd like to thank Rich for serving as my nominator for this award and taking all of the trouble to do whatever it took to make me succeed. I thank you all for this. Well, thank you, Larry. Now we will present the IEEE John von Neumann Medal. This award, sponsored by IBM, is named for the famous mathematician who helped set the standards for today's computer architecture. The medal is awarded for outstanding achievements in computer-related science and technology, whether they are theoretical, technological, or entrepreneurial. The recipient is Douglas C. Engelbart, director of the Bootstrap Institute in Fremont, California. He is receiving the von Neumann Medal for creating the foundations of real-time interactive personal computing. Dr. Engelbart is nothing less than a technical giant in the history of information processing. His vision was to build the hardware and the software structures to support a highly interconnected community of knowledge workers. His contributions to knowledge workers are all around us. Hypertext, the desktop metaphor, Windows, file sharing, distributed servers, and the mouse are just a few of the tools he and his team created that we take for granted. The idea of working with a computer interactively began in his research, Stanford Research Institute laboratory. Among the pioneers of the ARPANET, the precursor of the internet, his lab was at the receiving end of the historic computer network transmission from UCLA. Unfortunately, Dr. Engelbart cannot be with us this evening. Bruce Eisenstein will accept this award on his behalf. Several weeks ago, Dr. Engelbart was at a, a symposium where he was given an award by my university, and we were planning on meeting tonight and discussing some items of business. He called me and asked me to accept the award for him. He's somewhat under the weather. He regrets he could not attend and would like to thank the Institute for this recognition. The Institute awards the IEEE Heinrich Hertz Medal to recognize outstanding achievements in electromagnetic waves. It was established in 1987 and is presented annually for theoretical or experimental achievements. This award is sponsored by Deutsche Telekom. The recipient of the IEEE Heinrich Hertz Medal is Dr. Akira Ishimaru. He is Boeing Martin Professor of Electrical Engineering and Adjunct Professor of Applied Mathematics at the University of Washington. He is receiving, receiving the Hertz Medal for fundamental contributions to the theories and applications of wave propagation and scattering and random media and backscattering enhancement. Professor Ishimuru is one of the world's top scientists in electromagnetic wave propagation and scattering in random media. His work is distinguished by striking balances between mathematical analysis and physical understanding, between theory and experiment, and between fundamental research and practical application. The diverse applications of his research include optics, sonar, communications, detection theory, geophysics, and medicine. His two-volume text, first published in 1978, remains a classic in the field, and it is no exaggeration to say that he has shaped the research direction in this field for the past two decades. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Akira Ishim Aru.
Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd like to first thank I2E and the award committee for this special honor. I2E is my professional home. Through I2E, I learned many things. But not only that, I get to know many people, scientists and engineers, not only in the United States, but worldwide. And every year I look forward to attending I2E symposia and meetings to find out some new things and also to meet my old friend. For 40 years, I have devoted myself to the study of electromagnetic waves, which is sometimes called Hertz wave or Hertz and wave, because Heinrich Hertz in, 19, in 1888 conducted his first experiment to verify the Maxwell's theory of electromagnetic waves. Today, Hertz waves are everywhere. In every aspect of our daily life, from space communications, optics, medical optics, and wireless communications, and many others. And I'd like to thank I2VE for this special honor. And also, I'd like to thank my colleagues at the University of Washington and my graduate student at the University of Washington who actually did most of the work. <laughs> and uh, finally, I'd like to thank my family, particularly my wife, for their enormous support and encouragement. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ishimaru. The IEEE Richard W. Hamming Medal recognizes exceptional contributions to information science and systems. The award is funded by Lucent Technologies and is named in honor of Richard W. Hamming, who played a central role in the development of information science until his death last year. This year's recipient is David Professor Emeritus at the University of California at Santa Cruz. He is receiving the medal for design procedures, minimum redundancy codes, asynchronous sequential circuits, and contributions to analysis of visual imagery. David Huffman stands out as a man who comes up with ingenious solutions to complex problems. Solutions that have opened new directions in the design of information systems. As an example, is the development of a coding procedure that bears his name, Huffman Codes, are presently used in nearly every application that requires efficient use of binary digits to represent data. These applications include data storage and retrieval systems, modems, fax machines, and high-definition television. He developed this coding procedure as a term paper for a course he was taking at MIT. And his teacher, as his teacher now recalls, and I quote, I had tackled that problem myself and failed to find a solution, end of quote. Professor Huffman went on to make further contributions in information theory and coding, in the design of signals for radar and communication applications, and in asynchronous logic circuits. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting the Hamming Medal on behalf of her father is Elise Huffman and her husband, Jeffrey Grubb.
Ladies and gentlemen, my father was so looking forward to attending this ceremony. However, medical circumstances have denied him this privilege. I am his daughter, Elise, and this is my husband, Jeff. <laughs> we are here to accept on his behalf and with great gratitude the Richard W. Hamming Medal. In my father's words, it's good to know that we live in a world in which a few relatively simple ideas can still have significant impact. He is especially thankful to Lucent Technologies for providing the funds for this award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elise and Jeffrey. Please convey to Dr. Huffman our wishes for a speedy recovery. The IEEE Medal for Engineering Excellence was established in 1986 to honor achievements of exceptional application of engineering in the technical disciplines of the IEEE for the benefit of the public and the engineering profession. This medal is funded by Siemens AG of Munich, Germany. The recipient is Kyoji Mori, formerly president and vice chairman and, and new, now senior advisor of Kansai Electric Power Company in Osaka, Japan. He is receiving the medal for leadership in the development of gas insulation technologies and its application to realize bulk power transmission and reliable power system development. Mr. Mori is a distinguished engineer who has shown remarkable leadership in developing new electrical technologies to improve the power industry. He has continuously sought out new concepts and pioneered the development of new applications for power systems. His contributions are of global industry-wide importance. Nowhere was this more apparent than in his work at his own company. There is contributions to gas-insulated switchgear, high-voltage direct current links, and to the overall reliability of the network, made its power system one of the most reliable in the world. Kansai Electric's transmission system is unique in its flexibility and reliability. A key new technology spearheaded by Mr. Mori reduced the system's vulnerability to salt pollution, earthquakes, typhoons, and other natural disasters. Please join me in welcoming the recipient of the IEEE Medal for Engineering Excellence, Kyoji Mori. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is not only my pleasure to be the 14th recipient of the renowned Medal of Engineering Excellence, but also a tremendous honor to share this evening with this year's awardees. I have been working these 50 years in the field of power engineering under constant objectives uh, of my activity was to et establish a dynamic, flexible system with minimum investment and at the same time op optimizing its operation. Today, due to the effort of our hardworking engineers, Kansai is ranked as having one of the most reliable systems in the world. When I look back, at my career, what kept me motivated in the engineering world was my belief that the reliability of the system is indispensable for Japan's national economic development. At the same time, I felt a desire to lead our engineering team into being the best in Japan. On a personal note, I believe 
striving to develop new technologies with open the door to the future. Today's power systems are uh, exposed to complicated problems such as how to apply the rapid evolution of information and communication technology or how to settle the environmental subject concerning CO2. Today's young engineers are confronted with these ever-growing challenges. However, I believe they have the intellect and knowledge to develop innovative solutions. This medal, to me, not only symbolizes that the sole effort of an engineer can be recognized, but that it can also give encouragement to young engineers. I would like to thank the IEEE organization and the chairman that was inviting me again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mori. The IEEE Alexander Graham Bell Medal is sponsored by Lucent Technologies. It is awarded each year to an individual or group of up to three individuals for exceptional contributions to the advancement of communication sciences and engineering. The medal was established in 1976 to mark the centennial of the invention of the telephone and to honor Alexander Graham Bell. This year, the medal goes to Dr. David G. Messerschmidt, the Roger A. Strouch Professor of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of California at Berkeley. He is being recognized for fundamental contributions to communications theory and practice, including VLSI for signal processing and simulation and modeling software. The span of Dave Messerschmidt's leadership is enormous. At Bell Labs, he was a pioneer in the research that led to converting the analog telephone network to the digital form we're familiar with today. His later research at Berkeley on VLSI architecture for digital signal processing set a standard for the field. He is also a successful entrepreneur. He is co-founder of a publicly held company that provides software to telecommunication, telecommunications companies around the world. He has written several textbooks, mentored graduate students, and has been a strong force in modernizing graduate education in electrical engineering and computer science. It is my pleasure to award the IEEE Alexander Graham Bell Medal to Dr. David Messerschmidt. I'm really honored to uh, receive this, word, this award in such a wonderful venue. I'd like to thank uh, Lucent Technologies, uh, not only for support of the Bell Medal, for, but for also keeping the Bell name alive in Bell Laboratories and supporting that organization generously. Um, my my uh, core competency is uh, communications theory, which has made a tremendous impact on telecommunications, but really would be nothing without the tremendous uh, advances in semiconductor technologies which allow these theories to be implemented in practice. I was very fortunate to move from Bell Laboratories where I uh, received a real education in large-scale systems to Berkeley where there was a wonderful group doing uh, integrated circuit technologies with applications to telecommunications and another group uh, developing the core technologies of integrated circuit design. And uh, most of the uh, uh, advances that are represented by this award were done in collaboration with those folks. Uh, in doing research, I've uh, encountered several basic principles of uh, good research. One of them is uh, a practical uh, problem orientation to research. That is, uh, to identify the problem or challenge and then apply whatever, whatever disciplines, whether it be hardware, software, theory, uh, economics, whatever is relevant to solving the problem. Another is the great importance of environment. And I've uh, been fortunate to have a couple of really wonderful environments and collaborations for doing research at both uh, Bell Laboratories and at Berkeley. And the third is the importance of uh, certain key individuals that have an influence on one's career. 
and in my case, I'd like to single out four people that have a singular impact on my uh, education and career. One is Frank Barnes, who's here tonight of the University of Colorado. Another is uh, Ted Birdsall of the University of Michigan. A third is Bob Aaron of Bell Laboratories. And the, third, and the fourth is uh, Dave Hodges of UC Berkeley. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. The IAAA James H. Mulligan, Jr. Educational Medal is awarded for a career of meritorious achievement, exemplified by excellence in teaching, leadership in education, and contributions to the engineering profession. Sponsored by AT&T Labs, it was renamed this year to honor James H. Mulligan, Jr., a highly esteemed educator and the 1971 president of the IAAA. The recipient is Andres Van Dam, the T.J. Watson Jr. University Professor of Technology and Education and Professor of Computer Science at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. He's receiving this medal for his field-defining textbooks, the introduction of innovative educational technology and inspired undergraduate teaching. Andy Van Dam's record in education is, in the word, exceptional. For three decades, he has been one of those rare teachers to whom the entire profession looks for new ideas and new directions. He co-founded the Computer Science Department at Brown and forged it into a top-ranked department as he simultaneously helped establish the field of computer graphics. He was among the first to equip an entire academic lecture hall with individual computer workstations so instruction could be given in a mentor-student environment. The textbook that he co-authored, Fundamentals of Computer Graphics, has been the standard since its publication in 1982. And generations of his graduate students have gone on to leadership positions of heads as heads of computer science departments or executives at high technology firms. One of his former students says of Andy, and I quote, I entered Brown as a pre-law student with no thought whatsoever about computers. By chance, I took a computer course taught by Andy. I was so inspired by Andy's teaching that I made a life-changing decision to major in computer science." End of quote. That former student went on to become a senior executive at Microsoft, responsible for Windows 95 and the Internet Division. It is my honor to award the IEEE James H. Mulligan, Jr. Education Medal to Professor Andy Van Dam. I have to say, I've never been in an occasion so fancy that the Queen of England was the warm-up act. <laughs> I started my professional career leading the AIEEIRE section at Swarthmore College in the late 50s and discovered computers in 1960. I got into computers when you could literally get into computers. What I'm referring to is that I had the singular experience of being allowed inside the memory of the UNIVAC-1 and walking around with all those acoustic delay line memory tubes around me. In 1962, I discovered the joy of teaching with high school students and high school teachers, and that was a life-changing thing for me to do. And I've been teaching the freshman course at Brown since 65, and I've enjoyed it every year as it has changed out from under me every year. Teaching is indeed the noblest profession. And I want to thank, first, the inexhaustible supply of wonderfully motivated, talented students from whom I have surely learned more than they learned from me. I also want to thank the IEEE for paying so much attention to education and finally, I want to thank my wonderful wife of more than 40 years, not the wife part, that's almost 40 years, Debbie, who fortunately is here today. I feel truly honored to be in such distinguished company. And I finally discovered what I want to be when I grow up, 
I want to be like Charles Concordia, still going strong at age 91. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andy, on behalf of college professors everywhere. The Institute of Radio Engineers established the IEEE Founders Medal in 1952. It is sponsored by the IEEE Foundation. This prestigious honor recognizes outstanding contributions to the profession and to the Institute through wise and courageous leadership in the planning and administration of technical developments. The recipient is Benjamin M. Rosen, chairman of the Compact Computer Corporation. He is being honored for the support and nurturing leading to the creation of more than 80 leading electronics and computer firms, resulting in significant contributions to the engineering discipline, industry, and society. Ben Rosen has been called, and I quote, one of the most influential people to serve the electronics industry in the last half century. Computer World Magazine chose him as one of 25 people in the computer industry who changed the world, and Computer Reseller News named him one of the 10 legends of the PC industry. As a young electronics engineer, he worked for Raytheon, where he developed airborne radar systems, and Sperry Gyroscope, where he developed space guidance systems. He then began a 20-year career as a financial analyst in the New York financial community. In each of his last six years on Wall Street, Institutional Investor Magazine voted him the number one electronics analyst. With LJ7, he founded the venture capital organization Seven Rosen Funds, which has invested in high-tech startup companies like Compaq, Lotus, Cypress Semiconductor, and Silicon Graphics. Since 1983, he has served as chairman of the board of Compaq. Ben Rosen could not be with us this evening, and George Halmar is accepting the IEEE Founders Medal on his behalf. On behalf of Ben Rosen, I would like to thank the Institute for making this award possible and honoring Ben in this very, very special way. I've known Ben Rosen for over 20 years. He's a very unassuming man. He's a visionary man. He has deep insights into things related to high technology. He's a man that has a unique capability to recognize and interpret the weak signals of technology and grow successful companies around those weak signals. In my view, it's ironical that uh, the reason that Ben can't be here this evening is one of the reasons why he was selected to receive the Founders Award. He was one of the founders of Compact Computer Corporation. And as you know, Compact has run into a little bit of difficulty and Ben has assumed the position of interim CEO. Ben is up to his ears in problems these days of an operational nature. He deeply regrets that he could not be here this evening because he honestly looked forward to being here to receive the award in person. His brother, Harold Rosen, was the first recipient of the Alexander Graham Bell Award, and Ben so looked forward to be a, being able to show his brother that there were at least two engineers in the family. So on behalf of Ben Rosen, thank you very, very much. Thank you, George. The IEEE Foundation sponsors the IEEE Lamy Medal, which was established in honor of the outstanding design and development engineer, Benjamin Lamy. This medal recognizes meritorious achievement in the development of electrical or electronics apparatus or systems. The recipient is B. Giant Baliga, Distinguished University Professor of Electrical Engineering and Director of the Power Semiconductor Research Center at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. He is being honored for his sub sustained innovative contributions to power semiconductor technology, which have had widespread impact on power electronic systems. Professor Baliga's work has had a profound effect on the electrical engineering community and on our economy and on our quality of life. 
He played the central role in the invention of the insulated gate bipolar transistor, which ranks as one of the major advances in the history of solid state electronics. His research into specialized transistors has revolutionized the control of large motors, making factories and entire industries safer and more energy efficient. His findings have led to such new products as anti-lock brakes in cars and more energy efficient computers. His innovations drive the motors of sophisticated medical imaging equipment and have made possible lightweight, portable defibrillators for treating heart attack victims. In view of the fact that Benjamin Lamy was a key figure in the invention of the alternating current motor, it is appropriate that tonight we honor the man who enabled us to control those motors with greater precision than ever before. We welcome the recipient of the 1999 IEEE Lamy Medal Dr. B. Giant Baliga. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Over the years, I've had the privilege of making many inventions, as you've just heard. Uh, which seems to be consistent with a statement by the famous literary critic H.L. Mencken, who said, a professor has more ideas than a dog has fleas. Now, uh, I regard these inventions to be truly valuable only when they have a strong impact on society. So I feel it's a real privilege for me that the IEEE Board of Governors has chosen, uh, has deemed that my inventions have had sufficient merit to be worthy of the Lame Medal. Now, receiving the Lame Medal this evening is truly special for me because it puts me in the company of many of the giants of the industry who have made the 20th century the age of electronics. As we come to the end of this century, I feel hopeful that my continued innovations in this area will improve the efficiency of our electronics, leading to conservation of fossil fuels and reduction of environmental pollution. I want to take this opportunity to thank the IEEE Board of Governors for conferring this medal upon me, and I want to acknowledge my wife for her love and support over the 25 years of our marriage, which has been extremely important to my success. And I'm very pleased that this evening she and my two sons could accompany, to, accompany me to this wonderful affair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Baliga. The IEEE Edison Medal is jointly sponsored by Hitachi Limited, Mitsubishi Electric Corporation, and Toshiba Corporation of Japan. It was first presented in 1909 and is the Institute's oldest major award. It is unique in recognizing a career of meritorious achievement in electrical engineering, electrical science, or the electrical arts. It is with great pleasure that I present this year's IEEE Edison Medal to Case A. Schohammer, Imink, adjunct professor at the Institute of Experimental Mathematics in Essen, Germany. He is being honored for a career of creative contributions to, to the technologies of digital video, audio, and data recording. Case Imink's scientific and engineering leadership has, been, has had enormous impact in his field for more than 30 years. He has consistently made significant contributions in the theory of constrained coding, which is the foundation of recording code design. These contributions gave new impetus to the activities of other researchers in the field and opened entirely new avenues of inquiry. The great commercial success of the compact disc and other digital recording systems owes much to his work. The coding systems he developed are used in almost every piece of equipment that records digital audio, data, or video. These range from music CDs to CD-ROMs to digital video discs. The Institute is proud to present its Edison Medal to Dr. Case Schuhammer Imink.
I am deeply honored with the uh, medal named after a very, very great inventor. That great inventors may have weak moments is probably um, can be found in the uh, review that Edison made in 1889 when he said, there is no plea which will justify the use of alternating currents. Apparently there is a spot on my medal or so. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, so I do not hope that the medal committee took into account when they assessed my quality that they had made such blunders like Tom Edison. Anyway, during the last 25 years or so, we have witnessed what we call the digital audio and video revolution. There were no casualties, there was no blood, there were tears, and there was lots of sweat, indeed. And I believe the revolution has been a great success and the debris of the old analog regime has been removed. I think everyone, everyone is grateful for it. And maybe there are a few exceptions who long back to the warm distortion of the electron tubes, the scratchy sound of the gramophone, and the bus boom of the jukebox. As in the French Revolution, things started with little kids who threw stones to the establishment. I was one of those kids, and I could throw my stones much farther away than the others as I was allowed to stand on the shoulders of my friends, colleagues. I'd like to thank them for that. Just a few words about the future, if I may. I think the future of recording is very bright indeed. We will see, as predicted by Dr. Moore, we will see that the capacity will increase or double every two years or so. That's great. But the impact on your systems at home is probably not so clear. But I noticed, and that's probably will be known as Immings' law, that the time interval between the introduction of new audio or video formats will halve every two years. On the basis of this law, I predict that in 25 years from now, the introduction of an entirely new and incompatible audio format will occur every hour. <laughs> then, fortunately, we have, we'll have just enough time to play the newly bought record before both the player and the disc have become obsolete. Thank you very much. presented only when a candidate is identified as having made a significant contribution that is an exceptional addition to the engineering, science, and technologies within our members' fields of interest. For 1999, the Institute has identified just an individual, Dr. Charles Concordia. He is receiving the Institute's most prestigious award for outstanding contributions in power system dynamics which resulted in substantial improvements in planning, operation, and security of extended power systems. Charles Concordia is a preeminent scholar who has provided defining leadership in shaping the electrical power industry for more than six decades. It's safe to say that his early insights and clear leadership in this field have been instrumental in developing methodologies and techniques 
for more secure and reliable operation of electrical supply systems to the great benefit of humankind. In fact, Dr. Concordia may be the most well-known power system engineer in the world today. Why? Well, Charlie believes that his principal contribution has been to help others understand the nature of power system performance. Who is this larger-than-life figure who his friends know simply as Charlie? Let me tell you a little bit about him. He was born in Schenectady, New York, where the biggest employer in town, and still is, is General Electric. Charlie was graduated from high school in 1926. Under his yearbook picture are the words, physics, honor student, National Honor Society, and a quote from Shakespeare, which I quote, he thinks too much, such men are dangerous, end of quote. <laughs> Right out of high school, Charlie joined GE as a lab assistant. At the time, he continued his education by taking courses at Union College. When GE announced opening in, in its openings in its world-renowned advanced engineering program, the young engineer assistant applied. The examiner thought there was no chance that Charlie could pass, but concluded there was no harm in letting him try. Well, not only did Charlie pass the exam with flying colors, Within three years, he was one of the teachers of the program. Charlie's next career breakthrough came when he developed a new way to detect cracks in railroad rails. GE immediately awarded him the title of consulting engineer. His career since then has continued to be marked by seminal thinking in the dynamic analysis of inter interconnected electric power systems, electrical machinery, and automatic control systems. It seems Charlie Concordia has always been leading the industry in technical discoveries and in anticipating problems. For example, a paper on synchronous machines that he wrote in 1943 is still used as a key reference. A mathematical transformation named after him, the Concordia Transform, is still taught in university classes. And his 1951 text on synchronous machines is on the bookshelves of most of today's practicing power systems engineers. Charlie always seemed to be ahead of his time. During the 1960s, he led the industry in applying under-frequency load shedding schemes. By the mid-70s, he was pioneering long-term system dynamics. This was followed by work in power system reliability, and in the 1980s, he was one of the first to develop concepts in voltage stability. As a consultant, Charles served on the advisory panel to the Federal Power Commission on the major power blackouts of 1965 and 1967. He also consulted on the 1977 New York City blackout and other major power interruptions around the world. The scope of his involvement has been truly worldwide. As recently as the 1995 blackout in Cyprus, for example, Charlie brought his expertise to bear. He was also a leader in applying computers to solve engineering problems. In 1946, for example, Charlie organized and became the first chairman of the predecessor group to the present IEEE Computer Society. A year later, he was a co-founder of the Association for Computing Machinery. Another significant area of his leadership was in education, first as an instructor in GE's power system engineering curricula, and then in mentoring countless other engineers through the years. Within the IEEE, Charles has served as chair of the Research and Transfers Committee, and as a member of the Publications Board, the IEEE Spectrum Magazine Editorial Board, and the Power